Thank you for watching the St. Angelo Nature Center program on Channel 17. My name is Michael Price and I'm the Executive Director of the St. Angelo Nature Center. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my favorite types of reptiles, the turtles. Here in the Concho Valley, we have 10 species of turtles. Of those, eight of them are aquatic, which means they spend most of their lives in the water. By far, one of the most common turtles that are found in the water is the red-eared slider. The red-eared slider gets its name, if he'll stick his head out, from the little red patches right behind the eyes. These guys bask in gregarious numbers. Um, you can see up to 20 of them up on one log. In fact, they'll stack on top of one another. They're extremely common right here in Lake Nasworthy. Let's see if he sticks his, shell out, his head out, and you can see the red spots on the side. While we're waiting for him to stick his head out, we'll talk a little bit about the turtle shell. The turtle shell, the main purpose of the turtle shell is protection. As you can tell, it's made of a very hard substance, very bony-like structure that protects them from predators such as raccoons, uh, ringtail cats, and other, other predators that like to eat turtles. Here he's starting to stick his head out just a little bit. As he crawls off, you can see the red ear. These guys are sold a lot in pet stores for pets. They actually do not make very good pets because there's a lot of requirements that these guys have to have, including a special lighting, of course clean water, and a special diet. The top part of a turtle shell is called a carapace. And again, it's very, very tough. Many of you may have heard the story of the tortoise and the hare racing, the turtle and the rabbit. And the rabbit gets way ahead of the turtle and the turtle gets really upset about it. So what he does is he jumps out of his shell and takes off and wins the race. That is actually not possible. A turtle's shell is actually connected to his backbone. His backbone is fused together along with the ribs inside of the turtle's shell. Therefore, if a turtle comes out of his shell, he'd be nothing but a head, four legs, and a pile of meat. Another common species of turtle that's found in the Concho Valley is the common musk turtle. Another name for this turtle is Stink Pot or Stinking Jim. They're extremely common in the lake. In fact, uh, out of 10 fish, or I'm sorry, out of 10 turtles that fishermen may catch on a fishing line, nine of them will be these guys. They love to forage along the bottom and, and look for dead and dying fish. They've got an extremely pointed snout and they do like to bite. A lot of people who find these guys think they're snapping turtles but they're actually not true snapping turtles. They will attempt to bite from time to time, and they do eat a lot of fish, but mostly sick, injured, and dying fish. Snapping turtles look quite a bit different. They are also common here in the Concho Valley, but very rarely are seen by fishermen. Snapping turtles are very, very lazy turtles. They sit on the bottom, and they, have, they open their mouth, and inside of their mouth, their tongue looks like a little pink worm. So what they'll do with their mouth or with their the tongue, they'll open their mouth, sit on the bottom, and they'll wiggle that little tongue around and allow fish to come into their mouths. And then the fish come in, snap, they've got their meal. They're very, very lazy hunters. There are several ways you can tell a snapping turtle from other turtles. The snout is not one of them. You can see both these species have very pointed snouts. But if you flip a turtle over, you'll see the mud turtle, or the musk turtle, has a very large plastron, which is the bottom shell. It shells almost the same size as the carapace, the top shell. Whereas on the snapping turtle, their bottom shell is in the shape of a cross or a T. That allows for all the fatty deposits to hang over their bottom shell. Another characteristic of the snapping turtle is the tail. Musk, mud turtles, and all other turtles in North America have a very small tail, very, very short. Whereas a snapping turtle's tail is just as long as his top shell is. Snapping turtles are the only turtle in the United States, in fact, in North America, that have tails that are just as long as their shells. Again, snapping turtles do frequent the waters of the Concho, Concho River and Lake Nasworthy, but they're extremely uncommon. The most aquatic terrestrial turtle, which means land turtle that we have in, this, in, in the Concho Valley, is the, is the ornate box turtle. These guys are extremely common the further north of San Angelo you go. They like the, the, the cotton flats and the prairies north of San Angelo. They're called box turtles because in their plaster, in the bottom shell, they have a hinge that's made of cartilage. Cartilage is the stuff that's on the front of your nose or the top of your ears. It allows them to shut their shell completely. If she'll stick her head in, well, she's, gonna not, she's not gonna do it, but this is very flexible. You can see as I move her bottom shell, she could pull her head and her front legs in and shut her shell but she's not gonna cooperate. But anyway, you get the idea of how this bottom shell moves. This is as large as they get. These guys can live up to 60 years, average around 40. 
but very, very long-lived. But they're not as long-lived as a second terrestrial turtle that's found in the Concho Valley. These guys barely entered into the Concho Valley. These are the Texas tortoises. These are a true tortoise. Not all tortoises, not all turtles are tortoises, but all turtles, all tortoises are turtles. Let me say that again. All tortoises are turtles, but not all turtles are tortoises. Tortoises, true tortoises have very elephant-like feet and legs. They're very, very dense. They're very heavy for their size. They use these, these, long, these, long, these large legs in the front to, to burrow as they dig for different fruits and vegetables. They feed primarily on grasses, fruits, and vegetables. They love prickly pear pads. These are actually on the threatened endangered species list in the state of Texas. They are protected in Texas. You have to have a special permit to keep one. These guys can live up to 120 years. Uh, on average, far less than that, around 70 to 80 years, which is still long lived for an animal. This guy right here is actually over 40 years old. Uh, he was at the San Antonio Zoo for 30 years, and then he's been with us for almost 10 years. And so he's well over 40 years old because he was an adult when they collected him. Hopefully this has brought a little insight into some of the identification of some of the different turtles we have in the Concho Valley. If you have any questions, feel free to call us here at the Nature Center or, or stop by. And until, until next week, thank you very much.